Let us uh, work out an example uh, that requires us to construct a velocity triangle and calculate um, a few quantities of interest for an axial uh, turbine. So the problem statement uh, reads uh, as shown here. Uh, steam enters the rotor of an axial turbine at 500 meter per second. The blade speed is 200 meter per second. The nozzle angle is minus 65 degrees. And the blade angle at exit is 70 degrees. Note that uh, nozzle angle is the angle at which the uh, nozzle uh, before the inlet to the rotor is uh, oriented and steam issues from this nozzle and hits the rotor. So essentially, this is the inlet flow angle. If the mass flow rate is 1.8 kilogram per second, the relative velocity remains constant. Determine the blade angle at inlet, absolute velocity and flow angle at exit the power produced and the axial thrust. So we start uh, by uh, constructing the velocity triangle at the inlet and exit of this rotor. And we start to do this, we start with the uh, absolute velocity vector, which has a magnitude of 500 meter per second and is oriented in a clockwise uh, direction from the uh, reference direction at an angle of 65 degrees. Clockwise because the sign is given to be negative. So here is the uh, absolute velocity vector at inlet with magnitude of 500 meter per second. And uh, it is located at an angle of minus 65 degrees from the reference direction or 65 degrees in the clockwise direction. Note that the velocity triangle that we will uh, draw uh, would uh, not be to scale, but will be accurate qualitatively. So this is the uh, axial direction because it's an axial machine. That's our reference direction. So this is the axial direction. So this is the axial component of the uh, absolute velocity. This is the tangential component of the absolute velocity at the inlet. Now the blade speed is given to be uh, 200 meter per second. So it's actually possible to draw the blade velocity vector in uh, two orientation. One, which is shown in red color like this. The other one, which is shown in black, uh, like this. Now we need to make a decision on which one of this is actually uh, the one that is appropriate for uh, the problem under consideration. Notice that if we uh, go with this choice, uh, both the choices would actually lead to legitimate velocity triangles. For instance, if we uh, take this choice, then the relative velocity vector in this case would uh, point from here to here. So then C1 plus U would be equal to the absolute uh, velocity vector at inlet, which is a legitimate velocity triangle. Now uh, for this choice, the relative velocity vector would point from here to here. So C1 plus U is equal to V1, which is also a legitimate velocity uh, triangle. Uh, so the decision on which one of this is appropriate for us is uh, made as follows. Uh, in in this case, if you choose this for the, as the blade uh, velocity direction, then notice that V theta 1, the tangential component of the incoming fluid, is uh, opposite in direction to the uh, blade velocity vector, uh, which means that the, the steam that comes out of the nozzle will actually uh, impinge on the rotor blade and serve uh, as a braking jet. In other words, its effect would be to break the uh, rotor, uh, which is not what uh, the application that we have in mind. Okay, So we discard this choice for that reason and use just uh, this choice. Notice that in this case, V theta 1 and U are oriented in the same direction. Okay? So we discard this and proceed with this. We can now proceed to complete the inlet velocity triangle, which then looks like this. So C1 plus U equal to V1, that's the inlet velocity triangle. And um, it can also be seen that the inlet blade angle beta 1 is going to be a negative number because C1 is located in the clockwise direction from the reference direction. And this is C theta 1. This, uh, this segment is C theta 1. Notice that Cx1 is equal to Vx1. On the outlet side of the velocity triangle, uh, it is given that the relative uh, velocity makes an angle of 70 degrees uh, 
or the blade angle at the outlet uh, makes an angle of 70 degrees since the relative velocity vector is tangential uh, to the blade profile uh, this implies that the relative velocity vector at exit uh, makes an angle of 70 degrees and since it is positive it is in the counterclockwise direction from the reference direction so we may actually uh, <clears throat> translate this information into a relative velocity vector that looks like this so the blade angle or the angle of the relative velocity vector is 70 degrees in the counterclockwise direction from our reference direction and uh, it's further given that c2 is equal to c1 okay note that um, as i mentioned uh, earlier the diagram that we are trying to draw here is qualitatively accurate but not to scale which is why some of this information is explicitly mentioned in the velocity triangle which it may not be clearly discernible from the triangle itself and that is not the intent also okay so now we can go ahead and complete the uh, exit velocity triangle so v2 is equal to c2 plus u so the uh, exit uh, absolute velocity vector looks like this and this is the flow angle at exit notice that the flow angle at the exit is also positive because the velocity vector v2 is in the counterclockwise direction from our reference direction and this segment here is v theta 2 and this is equal to v x 2 so now we may go ahead and uh, actually uh, use trigonometric relations to carry out uh, and, and the calculations and compute the uh, quantities that we require okay? so let us uh, proceed keeping this velocity triangle in mind let us now proceed so starting with the inlet v theta one is nothing but v sine alpha one which comes out to be 453 meter per second vx one the axial component of the inlet absolute velocity is v one for sine alpha one and we make a note of the fact that this is also equal to cx one now since v theta one is greater than u that is at the inlet the tangential component v theta one is greater than the blade speed c theta 1 is equal to v theta 1 minus u so c theta 1 is equal to v theta 1 minus u and we already uh, have mentioned the fact that beta 1 is going to be negative so we make a note of that here as well uh, beta 1 may now be evaluated we have cx1 we have uh, c theta 1 so beta 1 is uh, arc tangent of c theta 1 divided by cx1 so that comes out to be 50.15 degrees and the negative sign is attached to this angle. C1 may also be evaluated now as the square root of using Pythagoras theorem as the square root of C theta 1 square plus Cx1 square and it comes out to be 329 meter per second and it is given in the problem that C2 is equal to C1. So we take this to be equal to C2 and once C2 is known from this velocity triangle uh, c theta 2 and c x 2 may be evaluated since the blade angle beta is known so c theta 2 is c 2 sine beta 2 which is like this and c x 2 is c 2 cosine beta 2 which is 112.78 which is also equal to v x 2 now since uh, c theta 2 is actually greater than the blade velocity here v theta 2 is equal to c theta i'm sorry since uh, c theta 2 which is this is greater than the blade velocity uh, v theta 2 is equal to c theta 2 minus u so v theta 2 is equal to c theta 2 minus u and this is 109.87 meter per second and we have already uh, noted the fact that alpha 2 is positive since v2 is in the counterclockwise direction from the reference direction so we make a note of that here and uh, alpha 2 may now be evaluated as arc tangent of v theta 2 over v x 2 which comes out to be 44.25 degrees and uh, absolute velocity may be evaluated using Pythagoras theorem in this fashion so now uh, we can evaluate the power that is uh, produced by the rotor uh, which uh, we have from Euler turbine equation as m dot u times v theta 1 minus v theta 2 you to substitute the numbers notice that v theta 2 in this case is in the opposite direction to v theta 1 so that means both v theta 1 and v theta 2 contribute to the torque on the rotor in the same sense so this actually becomes 
V theta 1 plus V theta 2. So, the power produced by the rotor is 202.7 kilowatts. Uh, you may recall that this was a fact that we had mentioned earlier uh, during our initial discussion of Euler, this is the initial development of Euler turbo machinery equation that the negative sign should be used with care or should be used only when V theta 1 contributes to the torque in an opposite sense to V theta 2. Otherwise, they have to be added together. Now, axial thrust is the force that is exerted on the rotor in the axial direction. Notice that this quantity here is the change in, uh, is the negative or the change in axial momentum of the fluid. The change in axial momentum of the fluid would be m dot times Vx2 minus Vx1 by, so that is the axial force that is exerted on the fluid. By Newton's third law, an equal and opposite force is exerted on the rotor, which is why we have written this as m dot times Vx1 minus Vx2. So, this comes out to be 177.354 newtons in the positive x direction. Notice that Vx2 minus Vx1, since Vx2 is less than uh, Vx1, this implies that uh, a force has been exerted on the fluid in the negative x direction, since its axial velocity decreases, which means that the force exerted on the rotor is equal and opposite. So, this is in the positive x direction. Since the relative velocity is constant, the degree of reaction is zero and the rotor is an impulse rotor. Okay. So I urge the student to uh, carefully go through this example uh, several times and make sure that uh, he or she understands the fundamental concepts, how the concepts that we discussed earlier are now uh, actually utilized for uh, solving a practical uh, situation. And for calculating quantities of practical interest.